Okay. Hello and good evening. Thank you for joining us for Spe Prince William County's Specialty Program Information Night. I am Karima Wesselhoff, your, um, the Supervisor of Advanced Academics and Specialty Programs for Prince William County. On the screen in front of you, you will see all of our contact information, starting at the top with our email address, and then all of our websites and our social media. These are the best ways to contact us if you have questions about programs, um, as that email account is, um, is managed by everyone on our team, and so we are able to answer it pretty quickly. To kind of give you a roadmap for this evening, we're going to start to talk about what specialty programs are in Prince William County. I'm going to help you understand what the offerings are as on the elementary school level, and then we'll walk through step by step the application process, the deadlines, as well as the supports that our office will, will offer you throughout this process. This, this um, presentation will also be recorded. And so if you are unable to stay for the entire presentation, or if there's someone that you know that is interested, but they've been, they have been unable to attend, we will record this and have this posted on our website within the, by the end of the month. All right, so I always like to start with what are specialty programs? So in Prince William County, specialty programs are any program that we offer in a school that focuses on career exploration, subject areas, a specific subject area, and or a college and university prep program. At the elementary school, all of our programs are what we called interest-based programs, meaning that if a student is interested, they just need to apply, and that would make them the initial eligibility for the program. We do offer programs in general on all three levels. Again, this evening, we're gonna talk about the elementary programs. And on the elementary school level, students participate in only one program at a time. If the program is offered at the student's base school or their neighborhood school, they um, would attend their neighborhood school. But if it is offered at a school outside of their neighborhood school, they would then become a transfer student, a full-time transfer student to that program location, and they would start to attend the other school on a full-time basis. And we'll go into this in a little bit more in depth shortly. Um, the first thing I like to do is I like to talk through what should I do? So families will often ask me, Ms. Wesselhoff, what do I do? I don't know if I want to apply for a specialty program. What should I do? How do I decide which one? You have so many. And so what I always ask families to do is start with an interest list or what I call an interest inventory. And so what I'd like to challenge you guys to do is with your student, um, you can have your student do this on their own. You can assist them as, or, as well. I would have them make a list of everything that they like to do when nobody's asking them to do anything. You didn't ask them to clean their room. You didn't ask them to play with their brother or sister. You didn't ask them to rake the leaves. You didn't ask them to, um, to hang out and cook something in the kitchen with you. What is it that the student, your student is gonna do? Are they going to read? Are they going to watch TV um, in, in different languages? Are they going to go outside and dig up um, worms and play with frogs? Whatever it is that your student likes to do when nobody's asking them to do on anything, you're going to put on a list. And that's step one. So the first thing you want to do is create this list. For some students, the list, and usually our long, younger students, the list is like three answers long. Sometimes they get a little bit older. There might be like 10 or 15 things long. It doesn't matter. You can put a time on that, on that list making, but you want to just get a full list of what your student enjoys to do. The second thing I like to do is I ask families to research your neighborhood school. So I want you to go on the website and I want you to look at what is the school that your student is zoned to? Um, what time, what are their office hours? What time do they open? What time do they close? How do you get to and from school? What kind of activities do they offer? What kind of special programs might they offer? Do they offer clubs after school? anything that that school might offer. And 
if they have the ability for you to go and visit and attend an event at that school, I always encourage families to go ahead and do that. It is really important that you understand what your neighborhood school has to offer before you start to look at another program outside of your neighborhood school. The third thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna research the programs that are available to your student. You wanna consider and do the exact same process you did for step two. So you're gonna research all the programs that are available. You're gonna find out what activities they offer. You're gonna find out what after school activities they offer if they have anything. Um, and what are any special things that they do in that building that makes that di building different than your neighborhood school. Once you've completed those three things, you're going to come back to your list, that list that your students made at the very beginning, and you're going to rank your programs of interest. So you're going to say, this program matches best with this interest of my student. This program matches best with this interest of my student. And we'll talk through those programs in just a moment. Before we get into the specifics of the program, it's really nice to go over the logistics and the specifications of the program. So in Prince William County, every single one of our program's locations serves a specific region. So based on your student's school location determines what programs they are eligible to attend. We are unable to, and we do not change the zoning for our program. So I'm giving you an example. In the example above, I'm a student that is zoned for Occoquan Elementary, which means that I live in the Occoquan Elementary area, but I am interested in the International Baccalaureate Program, the primary years program. So based on that information, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you will see that there's Antietam Elementary School, and you'll see the schools that are li listed below it. You see Buckland Mills Middle Elementary School and the programs that are listed below it. And you see Ellis Elementary School and the, or the schools that are listed below it. So if you follow that chart, you'll see that underneath Antietam, Occoquan Elementary is the school that is located in the, or Antietam is the school that's located in the Occoquan District. So as an Occoquan Elementary School student, I would attend the program at Antietam. The second consideration I want you to think about is we wanna talk about transportation. So when we talk about logistics, we wanna make sure that we're clear about how students get to and from school. There are two major types of transportations that we use in Prince William County, bus transportation. The first type is the traditional bus service. This is what most everybody is most familiar with. You have a bus stop that's somewhere in your neighborhood. The bus, you get up in the morning, you walk out your door, and within a few feet, you click, you step on the bus, and that bus provides you access to your neighborhood school. However, for students who are involved in specialty programs, we offer what we call express bus service, because oftentimes when students are participating in specialty programs, if it is at a school that is outside of their zone school, it's a little bit further away from their home. And so therefore we wanna make sure that we still provide them an opportunity to get to that school. And so Express Bus Service does that. This is a stop that stops somewhere outside of your neighborhood boundary. So it's not necessarily close to your house or right next to your house, but it does provide access to the specialty program school. Um, there's some considerations that sometimes that Express Bus Stop does not um, offer after school um, activity buses if your school is one of them that has an after school activity bus and that sometimes that transportation is not always guaranteed. Here's an example for you. So on the screen, you will see four students. Student A and student B are on the left. Student C and student D is on the right. For the student A and student B, let's focus on that side for a moment you'll see that student A and student B are both zoned for Antietam Elementary School and are both planning to attend Antietam Elementary School. Student A lives on Tecumseh Court and their bus stop is on Mohican Road in Tecumseh Court, which is approximately 400 feet from their home. So very close, get up, walk out the door, you're pretty much on your bus stop. Student B lives on Seminole Road 
And because of where they're located to Antietam, they walk to school, which is a distance of about 0.8 miles. Remember that students are able to walk to school if it's less than a mile and they don't have to par- cross any major roads or any safe uh, or unsafe uh, locations. On the right, you'll see student C and student D. Student C you'll see is a student who indeed, they're both students that are zoned from Mary Williams Elementary School. So their base school is not element, is not Antietam, but they want to attend Antietam for the primary years program, which we'll talk about shortly. Student C lives on Regatta Lane, and that express bus stop is at Williams Elementary School, which is a distance of 1.4 miles from their home. 1.4 miles is obvious, obviously a distance that's pretty far. It's over a mile. So it's outside of our, our span of um, what we would allow a student to walk to and from school. And so what we always ask families to think about is how would you get your student to that bus stop location? And considering um, on the elementary school level, most of the time people are really good about taking their students, but on some of the other ones, they say that the students can walk. Remember that we are entering winter time right now and it gets dark early and it's dark later in the morning. So we definitely don't want kids walking in the dark to and from their express stop, bus stops. We don't want kids crossing any um, dangerous uh, streets or highways or four lane roads. And so we really want families to consider what it is or where they are, um, how they're able gonna, to access that bus stop. Student D lives on Harwood Oaks Court and their bus stop is also at Williams Elementary. But what you'll notice with student D is student D lives about 0.3 miles from Williams Elementary, so a lot closer. So this might be an easier, a little bit of an easier um, passage for student D. But either way, both student C and student D are both gonna take that express bus stop to Antietam for the, um, the program, the specialty program. On the elementary school level, we offer three different types of programs. We offer the International Baccalaureate Primary Years Program. We shorten that to IBPYP. We also offer a traditional program and we offer world language programs. Starting with the IBPYP program, the IBPYP program is a program that is international. It uses the Prince William County curriculum, but they use an IB framework, meaning that they teach the curriculum inside of an understanding of global thinking. Students in the elementary school level explore global themes and try to think about how their life and how the things that they're doing in class connect them to the greater world around them. So how is the, how are the things that they're doing today? How does that impact their classroom? How does that impact their school? How does that impact their neighborhood? How does that impact the Prince William County as a whole? And all the way out until we talk about how the impact might be on the world. We really want students in our IB program to connect the world and their learning together and they focus on developing um, learner profiles. So students with IB um, courses tend to be able to articulate their their learning um, using um, keywords. So for a student who um, maybe tried an activity that um, was a little bit scary to them, they might say, ooh, I was a risk taker because I tried this activity, right? Um, And so they're gonna use that IB terminology to be able to explain their learning. The goal of IB is to, as most of our education is, to focus on lifelong learning. And the really good thing about the IB curriculum is that all of the content tends to be interwoven. So what they learn in English, they'll learn something similar in math and science and social studies. The example I like to give is if we're learning about frogs in science, we might be counting the frog population in math. We might be writing a story about frogs in English Um, And we might be studying the geography of frogs in history. So, or the history of frogs in history, any of those. So it's really this interconnected content. We have five IBPYP locations. You'll see them on your screen right now. 
I'm going to give you a moment to look over each one and you'll see that the below each name, so below Antietam, Buckland Mills, Ellis, Mullen, and Rosa Parks, you will see all of the schools that attend that school. So let's look at Buckland Mills for an example. If you go to Alvey Elementary, Buckland Mills Elementary, Glen Kirk Elementary, Gravely Elementary, Haymarket Elementary, Mountain View Elementary, or Tyler Elementary, you would apply to the program at Buckland Mills. And that's how the, you, you're able to read these screens. I'm gonna give you guys a moment to look that over and find your school so that you know what your IB location is. I'm also gonna take this time to let you know that if you would like to um, ask a question, there is a Q&A button at the very bottom. Feel free to type it. Um, I did not introduce all of my friends this evening, but we do have um, several people on the call this evening that are answering questions um, in the chat for in, or in the Q&A um, portion. Our second type of school that we offer on the elementary school level are what we call our traditional schools. Again, our traditional schools use the PYP or the PWCS curriculum, and they focus on a traditional school framework. For example, at one of our two schools, Pennington, Pennington follows the Marva Collins model. So students wear uniform, students um, tend to be in like more like straight rows, students tend to do a little um, like call and response, and that's part of the Marva Collins model. The students all beyond the uniforms, which is the biggest piece that, that I get asked about, families also have to complete um, together with their student a community service project every year. So for students who um, are in first grade, they usually have about 10 hours of community service that they complete with their families. And then in eighth grade, they're up to like 40 hours of community service every year. Um, our traditional schools um, are fairly popular schools. And so they always go to a lottery. And when I say lottery in the realm of specialty programs, it means that there are more seats in the, pro it, there are more people who have applied to the program then there are seats available. And so when that happens, what we do is we look at everybody who is eligible for the program. We put them in essentially in a bucket and then we pull names. That's done electronically through the computer, but that's, a, that's the same process that we use. At our two schools, um, we have Pennington on the West and Porter on the East. And I wanna, point your attention to this is our only program in the division that is not based on your school that you're the school that you attend it's based on the location of your home so if your home your physical house address is east of Hoadley Road you would apply to Porter if your if your home address is west of Hoadley Road you would apply to Pennington Our third program is our world language program. We offer one-way immersion programs. That means that st students study one language um, during the school day in their core classes, and they study them all through grades one through five. We currently offer only two languages. We offer both Spanish and French at multiple schools around the division. And so in the world language program, again, we're using Prince William County curriculum, but we're teaching some of it in a different language. So for example, in, kin in first grade, your student might take um, an exploration of, of language. Then in second grade, they might have their entire science class would be in Spanish. Then in third grade, it might be their math classes in Spanish. In fourth grade, it would be, um, English, and then maybe in fifth grade, it would be social studies. So they kind of rotate through um, the, the courses, the core courses in that language to give kids a very good overview, as well as kind of a depth and a breadth of, um, of terminology. And of course, the languages we talk about are Spanish and French right now. And on your screen, you'll see all of the programs that we have that offer those languages and their location. So again, if you look to the right, you'll see Enterprise. 
And underneath it, you'll see in parentheses Spanish. That means they only offer Spanish as their um, language in that location. And all the schools below it are the schools that are able to attend. And I'll give you guys a moment to again, find your school. Okay. The next question we get asked is we get asked about the evaluation criteria. How does my child get in? So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to apply. The application is really important. It is important that you apply even if that school is your base school. So if you already attend Enterprise, you still must apply to the World Language Program in order to participate in the program at Enterprise. If you live in um, uh, in the Tyler district, you still must apply to the world language program in order to be able to participate there. Okay. And the same thing with our IB um, programs, we want you guys to apply to them. So the first thing you're going to do is apply. The second thing that you're going to do is our coordinators are going to look at your students' academics. Our, um, our criteria, again, our programs are interest-based. So we're looking for students that are, are good students. Um, they don't have to be the absolute top of the class. They just have to be good students. Um, uh, C or better in most of their classes. And I know in elementary school, the letters are a little bit different. Um, and then you must be in good attendance and behavior standing. So for attendance, we want to make sure that your student is a coming to school every day and then is participating in school and that their behavior is satisfactory. And once your student has met that basic criteria, they go into that big bucket that I told you guys about earlier. So the first thing our coordinators do is they say, does this child or does this student meet the criteria? If the answer is yes, that means your student is eligible, eligible to participate in the program. If, there, if we have a program that has 20 seats and we have 12 eligible applicants, all 12 of those applicants would therefore get into that program. If we took the same program that had 20 seats and we had 25 applicants that were eligible, then 20 of those students would become um, in the program or would be offered a seat in the program. And the other five would then go to a wait list. Traditionally, it varies from school to school and year to year who ends up with a wait list and who doesn't. Um, I will let you know that Pennington and Porter are almost always on a wait list um, because they always have more applicants than they have um, seats available. Um, but some of our other IB programs and our world language programs will also run a lottery. So remember when we talked back about earlier about the process, when you guys go to visit your schools, those are gonna be questions that you wanna ask. You wanna ask them if they're on a lottery. Next, we have your timeline. So right now you guys are in step one. You are attending an information night and we're so glad to have you here. You are researching your programs. And then the other piece of this is every single one of our schools is going to offer an information night um, at, their, at their school location. And it is specific only to that school. So where you get here is you get a very general overview of programs, but you're gonna wanna go to that school program or school information session and really hear about the program, ask a lot of questions, obviously ask about the lottery, but you also wanna know what, do you, what does my student get when they get here? Um, what makes your school special? Why should my student attend this school versus our neighborhood school if it's not your neighborhood school? You're gonna to wanna to go to those information nights and ask as many questions as you might have for that coordinator. They are truly the experts in their program. They will also be able to tell you about scheduling in that program. So they'll be able to tell you exactly how many minutes of world language does your student get a day or a week in, and in what courses they have. Those are the specifics that you're gonna to wanna to attend those information nights for. The second step is that our application will open for families on November 1st. We are gonna walk you through it tonight so you can see what it looks like, but it does open on November 1st. And you have from November 1st until February 1st to submit an application. So if on November 1st, you're not ready to submit an application, that is perfectly fine. If you are ready on January 29th, that is perfectly fine. It's also okay to not submit an application. These programs are available to anyone who is interested, 
but it is not a requirement. All of our programs are going to offer, all of our schools are going to offer a comprehensive program, meaning that they're going to offer English, math, social studies, science, as well as the encore classes in every single one of our elementary schools. They're going to offer acceleration in math and science and English as you kind of get older in those classes. So all of our schools will offer those items. So don't feel, sometimes parents feel like they have to, like if my kid's going to go to college, I must apply to a specialty program. That is not the case, but we do want families who are interested to make sure that they apply. Um, you have until February 1st. We ask that you not wait till the last minute because sometimes it just gets to be a lot of people at the last minute, but you do have until February 1st. And then around middle of February, you're going to start to check your status in the application portal. And you're going to say, did my kid get in? And you're going to see a couple of choices for whether or not your student is accepted. Um, and then if your student is accepted, you're going to want to let us know that you want that seat no later than March 5th. So if you're someone who's taking notes, there are some really important dates I went over. November 1st is critical. Application opens. February 1st, super important. Application closes. We cannot accept any applications after February 1st. And then March 5th, the, the deadline to accept or to decline your offer is March 5th. After March 5th, everything kind of stops and you go to the school that you go to. You'll see three main types of things on the acceptance results. You'll see accepted, which means that there was a seat for you in that program and they're offering you a seat. You will see not accepted, meaning that you were not offered a seat in any program, or you'll see waitlisted, which means there's more positions, there are more students than there are positions available. And so they've put you on a wait list in case a seat becomes available. Let me go back to the top and talk through the accepted for a moment. Students may apply to up to three programs at a time. So you can choose a first choice, a second choice, and a third choice program. But you will only ever be offered a position from one program. So if we look at the programs that I, as I gave them to you, I gave you three programs. I gave you the IBPYP program. I gave you the traditional school program. And I gave you the world language programs. So I'm going to use those three as my example. So let's say my first choice program was IBPYP and I applied to my program. My second choice was the traditional program and I applied to that. And my third is the world language program and I applied to that. Once you receive an offer, all three schools will evaluate you. But then the first choice program is your IBPYP program. If the IB program says, yes, I want this student, they will take you and you will receive an accepted offer from the IB school. The other two programs will no longer be in contention. So they just kind of fall away and you'll see them showing as expired, okay? However, let's say the IB program is full and so they, pa they, they passed on you. So you're gonna go to the next school. That means your second school is the traditional school. If the traditional school would like to offer you a seat, you'll see accepted next to the traditional school offer and everything else will be waitlisted. I'm sorry, would be expired. And then the world link, if you were not accepted to that traditional program, it would be a no for the IB, a no for the traditional, but the world language program will offer you a position. Then you'll see an acceptance for the world language program. The only time you will see not accepted is if you are not offered a seat in any program. Okay, so that's those are three. So accepted, not accepted, and waitlist are the ones that you're going to see the most. Okay, I'm going to take a moment. We're going to pause and we're going to go over to the application. I'm going to walk you through first our website so you understand where to go for information. And then I'm going to walk you into the application so you can see it. It's important to know that our application is not yet live. Um, it will be live shortly on November 1st, um, but we do have a way of showing you what it looks like on this end. So we want to make sure that families are aware of what that looks like. So to get to our website, there's two ways to go. We're going to take you the long way, but also know that um, you can just go to pwcs.edu slash specialty programs. 
So if you're going to go the long way, you'll see you go to the Prince William County website. You're going to click on academics. You're going to click on advanced academics and specialty programs. And that's where you're going to get to here. And you guys should be familiar because I believe this is where you signed up to attend tonight. And so down here at the very top bottom, you're going to see advanced academics and specialty programs. Click on specialty programs again. And here is all of the information that you'll need. So for our case, we're looking at elementary programs. So over here on this, um, on the left toolbar, you'll see elementary programs. You're going to click on that. And here's the information. So you have your information sessions where you've registered for those. And then you'll notice at the very bottom, we have our three programs that we talked about, our IB program, our traditional school program, and our world language. We're going to go ahead and click on our IB program, just for an example. You'll see at the very top, there's a full explanation of the program. And what's really important is this, pro this part here, transfer program. So that means students attend this program all day, every day, and they may use express bus transportation. And you'll notice what grades this is open to. So if your student is a rising first, second, third, fourth, or fifth grader, they are, up, they are welcome to apply to the program. Go a little further down and you'll notice the school location. So we have Antietam, Buckland Mills, Ellis Mullen, and at the very bottom, not last but least, but uh, least last but not least is Rosa Parks. Um, and you'll see what we have under Antietam. So we'll have the school, we always have the school and we always have the coordinator. So there's gonna be very specific questions about programs that you're gonna wanna ask me that I will not know, um, but your program coordinator is here and you have a phone number and an email address for her. They happen to all be hers on the elementary level. Um, we have a link to the website. You're going to use this link to, um, to do that research we talked about. And here's the really important things we talked about, this information meetings. Remember, you're having an information meeting tonight. You're going to attend one of these as well if you're interested in the IB program. You'll notice that at every school, we, off, we, we list the dates that are, their information nights are, as well as the location and um, the time. And we also offer the attendance zones down here. So you know exactly what school is attending to which location. So you have that information up front as you're making your informed decisions. Okay. I'm going to go back one level, back to the elementary school programs. And you'll also see over here on the right-hand side, the application process. On November 1, if you click on the application process, there'll be a big old button up here. They'll say, apply now. But in case you have questions about the process, again, you can go back through this and go, it's a kind of a step-by-step -step to the programs or the conversation we had to this evening, okay? And also back on this page on the right-hand side, oh, let's go back to elementary programs, my apologies. You'll notice transportation information. So as you're making informed decisions, we wanna make sure that you have everything you need to make a decision. And so you'll notice that we have the definitions of um, transfer programs and how we offer buses. But what's most important is over here, we have all of the express bus stops listed here. And so what you'll see is you can make a decision today or whenever you're ready to apply on whether, how convenient it is gonna be to get your student to and from that express bus stop. So we want you to have as much information as possible. So if you live super close to Williams Elementary, like that was in that example I gave you, then you're like, oh good, this is a really good one. But if the closest bus stop from your house is a little bit further away, you just need to consider how you'll get your child to and from that location. It's not a no, it's just we want you to make sure that you can properly plan, whether or not that means that you know, you're know you gonna take your child in the morning to the bus stop, a family member might, or you have a daycare situation, whatever it is that you're gonna do, we just wanna make sure that you have all of that information, okay? Now we're going to head over to the application. So again, the application is not live. Um, if you went into this today, you could go ahead and create an account, but it won't be able to submit anything just yet. Um, and before we get started, there's two things I want to point to. One, here at the very top, if you click select language, it will translate it using Google Translate into 120, any of 120 different languages. 
So it'll change all of this text so that you can read it in whatever your preferred language is. Um, it's important to know that if you have multiple applications for the same choice, so remember we told you you're going to choose a first, a second, and a third choice program, that if you have two number ones, two number twos, or two number threes, one of them will be eliminated. We always keep the most recent submission. So if you submit the IB as your first choice, and then later on you said, oh no, I went to the traditional school information session, I really want that to be my first choice, you have the ability to go in and change that as long as you only keep, we, we always will keep the last one. We realize that sometimes people wanna change their minds and we wanna give them that. The first thing you're gonna do on your, on your application portal is you're gonna create a dashboard or you're gonna create your family. And so there's information on how to do that here. And then, because we offer a lot of programs, you're gonna go down here and if you haven't created an account, you're gonna create an account. I've already created an account, so I'm gonna log in. There's information at the very top. You only need one dashboard per family, per family. So if you have three children that you're applying to, you still only need one dashboard. It's also really, really important to make sure that you apply using an email address that you check. Our office and communications office, we do not send out communications about the application. It only comes from the application portal. So if it's an email address that you do not check, it will end up in spam or it will end up somewhere in the universe and you're going to miss deadlines. So please use an email address that you check often. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go down here and you're going to click associate student. Like I have clicked this button and you'll notice that you can add information for the student. So the student should be in currently enrolled. You're going to make sure that you put in their student number for us. That's their lunch number their date of birth, if they're a twin, a triplet or a quadruplet, the grade level for this current year. So right now, what grade is your student in? And next year, or, and what school do they attend this current year? So where are they going to school right now? Then you wanna say for next year, you're gonna say, what grade are they gonna be in next year? And for this zone school of attendance, this is what school they would attend next year. This is your home address, not the, the school that you wish for them to attend. So if you're applying to the IB program in Antietam, but you live at Aquaquan District, you're going to make sure that this says Aquaquan because our program understands where your zone school is to create your other, op your opportunity. So make sure that this is the school that your child should be going to next year if they went to your, their neighborhood school, okay? You're going to save it or you're going to associate another student, whichever one, we're going to go back to my dashboard and you'll see that I already have three students as associated. I have Tuna, Jasmine, and Winnie. Um, Tuna is, all three of these are cats. Tuna is not a child. Um, but my elementary school out of these ones is going to be Winnie. So I'm going to show you what Winnie's portal looks like or what her dashboard looks like so you can see her. So you see her name is information here. Um, she is going to be, we're going to make her a student in Prince William County. And you'll know she's a second grader. She's attending Belmont Elementary, which means next year she'll be in third grade because she, her, we're going by our neighborhood school. She's still going to attend Belmont Elementary. So it's okay if these two are the same. And then you're gonna either update, associate, create those types of things. When you come back to this main page, you're gonna hit submit application, okay? And you're gonna begin an application for Winnie. And you'll see for Winnie that she has all of these options available. So um, these are the ones that fall into her category. So she has the IB program, the IB pre primary years program, the traditional schools and the world language. So we're gonna start with the IB one because that's the one, just the first one on the list. It tells me what grades are available, what locations, and you're gonna hit appeal. Oh, you're gonna hit submit on your application. For us, it's an appeal because we're doing it off cycle. Um, and you'll see that automatically, because I chose Belmont as my base school, it tells me what school I'm going to. So it tells me right away, Antietam Elementary is the right school for you to apply to, which is excellent. So you don't have to do the thinking. You just have to apply and make sure your schools are correct in the dashboard. It gives you information. You're going to click select. You're going to create a new application. And a lot of the information will come over right away. So you'll be able to see it. 
you'll be able to, you'll have to fill in a little bit of information. So you'll have to say what she is, like boy or girl. And um, let me fill out this for you guys. And so what you wanna make sure is that this information is correct. Um, like I said, they will include, or much of this information will come over when the application opens up in the in the November 1st. And the really important part is in this family information, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you tell us the relationship between you and the applicant. Um, that's super important, especially if it's a transfer. Is this the student's first choice, second choice, or third choice? I'm gonna say that it's her first choice. And I'm gonna say that her bus stop is going to be Belmont, because that's our neighborhood school. I'm going to say, yes, I understand that I have to meet the program requirements, which you're going to learn all about when you go to the information sessions. And I'm going to initial. And then this one doesn't really apply to elementary school, but it's a uh, general on our application. So yes, you're going to meet the athletic eligibility. And this is where you go and you confirm. So you're like, yes, I am definitely going to do this. This down here is where you're going to see what we call tiers. So this simply means that when we go back to the dashboard, you'll see that Winnie has already applied to some other schools, right? And so what it's asking me is, if it's the first time you're doing this, you won't see this. If it's the second application you're submitting, it's gonna say to you, which one does Winnie want to be her first choice? Does she want Antietam to be her first choice? Does she want Lake Ridge to be her first choice? You tell me. If I think I want Antietam to be her first choice, I'm gonna just press this up arrow and it now makes Antietam my first choice. But let's say I made a mistake. I can just press this down arrow and it goes back the other way. And you can do this for every application you submit and change your order, okay? Once you say, okay, I am sure. Antietam is my first choice. Lake Ridge is my second choice. I Yes, I have reviewed it. I know my order. You as the guardian are going to initial. And then you're going to sub, you're an initial here with your finger or your pen or whatever. And you're going to submit your application, verify that you're not a robot, and it submits. As soon as you submit, you will get two things. One, on your screen, you will get this order number. And you'll notice here it has my email address right here. I got an email. You can't hear it. I just heard it. But I got an email that said your application has been submitted. If you do not see that, that email when you submit your, when you create a dashboard account, or when you have uh, submitted an application and it comes immediately within three to four minutes, it should be in your inbox. If you don't see that, please check your spam folder and make sure it's there and make sure it's working and contact either us um, or contact the app. The, here's the technical support. They're excellent. Contact technical support. If you don't get that email, you will not get any communication from us. So it's really, really important. Okay. All right, and then you're gonna head back to the dashboard. If you wish to submit another application, you'll submit again. If you don't, you're good to go ahead and sign off. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like on this end. So again, these are all of my children, right? And so you'll notice that Winnie Cooper applied here for Lake Ridge and she applied here for Antietam. The order on this screen is the order that it was submitted. It doesn't mean that it's your first or second choice. So remember on the application portal, we made Antietam our first one and Lake Ridge our second one. So on the backside, we'll be able to see that. But also you can see all of my other children and all of their applications as well. So Tuna has a couple and Jasmine has one. So we're gonna fast forward and pretend that we are somewhere around the middle of February and you received an email from the portal and it says, hey, there's a decision in the portal, you need to go in and check. And so when I go in and check, I notice, look at what's going on right here. So for Tuna, Tuna was denied from our program. So a lot of times families will say, well, what does it look like when my child is denied or when my child is accepted? And this is what it's gonna look like. So right now for Tuna, we just did a denied one. And as you can see, Tuna is my high schooler and she did not... Um, meet the program requirements because she did not do well with her mouse keeping skills um, since she's a cat. And so um, Tuna um, was not accepted into the agriculture and horticulture program. Remember, there's other ways you can see it. You'll either see a green accepted or a yellow um, seat available. And there will be a little button for you over here that says, yes, accept, accept seat or decline seat when the time comes. Okay. 
Also on this dashboard, you'll see viewer ad docs. We don't need it unless you are a student that's coming from out of division, but otherwise we don't use that field for, for elementary programs. So you don't need to worry about it. If you're coming from outside of the division, we will work with you to make sure that you upload your transcripts. Um, but otherwise it is not a button that you need. And that is really it. We have found some families that check this dashboard every single day. You're absolutely welcome to check the dashboard. We have families that only check once a week or only check. We want you to put in your calendar that if you have not received an email by February 20th to make sure you check the dashboard, February 20th, by that point, we should have communicated decisions. So make sure that you check the dashboard by February 20th. Okay. All right. So that's our application portal. So let's go back here. And quick review. So right now we're in the October, January fret time frame. You're going to attend your information sessions. You're going to rank your programs. You're going to start to apply in November. You're going to applications going to close in February. And then you're going to make sure that you're checking that portal. Before I close for tonight, I want to offer you some supports. So one, we talked a little bit about our information, our information that is you can see on the screen right now. Please email us with any questions that you might have generally about the programs. If you have program specific information, you make sure that you attend those information sessions at the schools. The second piece is starting in November after the application portal comes on, we will post on our website, so on the pwcs.edu slash specialty programs, we will post a series of help sessions. And what they will be is they will be Zoom meetings where you can just pop in and pop out whenever it's most convenient to you during that time frame, and ask us questions about your application. Again, we don't or won't be able to answer program specific information, but if you're having a difficulty submitting your application, you can just pop in, we'll look at your application, we'll help you, and then you can go about your day. We offered this last year, and we probably had about 50 families that took us up on it. And sometimes it's a very quick fix, and we can fix it within a couple of minutes. Sometimes it takes us a little longer, but at least we can help you and make sure that it's submitted in time. What we don't want you to do is please don't get frustrated um, and decide not to apply. If you're really interested, reach out to us. We're here to assist you. Okay. Um, those will start, we'll start doing those in November and we'll offer a few sessions throughout November, December, and January leading up to um, the application closing. So that is another option I want to make sure that you have. Um, and if you have any questions, again, please reach out to us. We really appreciate you guys coming this evening. We um, hope that you have gotten a lot of information from us and that everything that you need. And now I am going to open up to Mrs. Brown, who is one of our team members here in Advanced Academics and Specialty Programs and ask if there's any um, questions or themes that I can answer kind of live. It's been surprisingly quiet in our chat in our Q&A this evening. Um, one question is about if families will have access to the slides that we used for this evening. Absolutely. I'm so glad you asked. Yes, we will post the both the slide deck as well as the video um, by the end of the month. We always will take it. It goes through transcription first. And once it goes through transcription, we will post it on our website. Um, we'll post both the PowerPoint as well as the, um, the video. And so we'll often get families, they'll say, hey, I had a question about how to do this. And we'll say, go to the video 30 minutes in. And that's where it starts. So yes, those will both be available for anyone who needs them Wonder. by the end of the month. Thank you. Um, one question that came up in the chat, and we did answer it in the chat, but I think it's great for all families to hear. If a student attends a specific elementary school for a specialty program, how does that impact what middle school they would attend? So it doesn't. So it's think of it every time as like a reset. So your neighborhood school is always your first school. And so if you attend a school for a specialty program and it's outside of your neighborhood location, you still are going to assume that you're going to go back to your neighborhood school when you're applying for other things. Could you apply for a specialty program in the middle school level? Absolutely, but it's not required. It is an option um, for sure for anyone, but it's not like 
if you don't do it now, you can't do it later. Um, and the one thing I did forget to mention um, while we're on this topic is our IB primary years program is our only program that goes from first grade all the way to 12th grade. So that's a really cool thing. But yes, you can you can jump in and out of a program from elementary school and then not do it in middle school and then jump back into something in high school. What we don't want families to do is jump in and out of a program during the duration of the program. So if you enter in first or second grade, we are expecting you to obviously stay at least that year, but preferably through fifth grade. Um, and then same thing, if you apply in sixth grade, the expectation is that you would stay through eighth grade um, and you don't have to reapply every year. Once you apply, as long as you continue to meet program requirements, you are still, you get to remain in that program. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, another question that's come up frequently in the Q&A is about um, services that a student is already receiving at their base um, elementary school. So mm -hmm. If it's gifted services, special education, um, English language learners, what happens to those services if they choose to go to a specialty program? So those services are attached to the student. So all of our specialty program schools offer all of those supports and all of those services. So if your student is a gifted student at, at a school, when they apply to and are accepted to a specialty program, they are still a gifted student at that other location and they will receive services at their new location. Same thing for English language learners, you'll still con continue to receive English language learner services. And same thing for special education services, you'll receive special education services. We do not ask for that information on our, on our application because for us, it doesn't matter. We provide those services anyway. Um, so you won't ever see us ask for that. There is one exception to that rule. At Porter, they offer a separate lottery for students who are in, um, who receive certain special education services. So if you have an IEP in the Porter application only, it will ask you if you have an IEP. It does not eliminate your child. Your kid is still in the running. It just is a separate lottery from um, the other lottery. So they wanna make sure that they have enough teachers to provide the appropriate support. And so they run it that way. But yes, all of your services follow you wherever you go. Ron, you're muted. Thank you so much. Um, that is, those are all the questions that we have. Um, oh. There, oh, I'm, I take it back. I say that and then all of a sudden it appears. Um, one question is, um, it's not really a question, I guess. There are not specialty programs available at every elementary school. They are only available at the elementary schools that were listed. Um, and then as far as if you do have questions regarding zoning, um, there's a situation where your home is closer, things like that. Um, if you can please reach out to us at our email, which is aasp at pwcs.edu, so we can look more into the question that you're raising, that will be helpful. Um, and, that's and, and in general, we do not we do not shift zoning. So as just mm -hmm. a, kind of a general rule of thumb, we'll obviously look at each case individually. But zoning is zoning, and we we don't we don't mm -hmm. shift them. So we do occasionally have a situation where one program location is much closer than the program location that you're assigned to. And unfortunately for the most part, students do have to attend the zoning, the zone location school. Um, but again, absolutely email us and we will address your, your question individually. Um, so I, I see a question. Um, no, none of the, we don't have currently any um, elementary school programs that are STEM focused, um, but no, it absolutely does not handicap a child who is gifted in STEM. All of our elementary schools in the county are going to offer some sort of STEM service or STEM activities and things like that. And so, and then of course, through their gifted, if they're in the gifted program, they would receive some services there as well. Um, we have students from Every single school in our county, they all graduate from high school on time. Um, and we send students from all of our high schools to Ivy League. So there isn't a disadvantage. I'm a um, almost a lifelong uh, Prince William County uh, resident. I moved here when I was five. So I've done all of my schooling here and I've gone through a series of schools. All of our schools are excellent. And that's why we really encourage families to start um, to go and attend and visit their neighborhood schools 
and really get a feel for themselves on what, what is offered in their neighborhood school and then look at their um, specialty programs. Um, I can say that I've had great experiences at all of the schools that we visited and we visit quite a few on our team. Um, but yes, any service that you need, we're offered at any school. We are gonna be able to support students on all levels regardless of what school they are attending. So if you have a student who's gifted and you're concerned because you want them to be challenged in a certain area, whichever school they go to, they will be able to receive some sort of service in that area. And I think that might be all the questions. I think awesome. you're great. We've gotten awesome. some sympathies that we uh, answer all the questions before they happen. Fabulous. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you guys again for coming to our information session. Let me try to put my face on so you can see what I look like. There you go. Um, I am still in my office this evening. So thank you guys for coming this evening. Um, again, if you have any questions, you have our contact information. Please send us an email to the general email inbox. And we look forward to seeing your applications when it opens on November 1st. Have a good night. Thank you.